Guys, once again, if you can, please subscribe to the channel and please hit the like button on this video. So guys, we've got a new story coming in and two teenagers have been sentenced to a total of 34 years in prison for murdering the schoolboy Kyrie McLean and have been named in a rare lifting of anonymity. Jackal Pusey, who's 15, had pleaded guilty to the murder while 17-year-old Giovanni Harriet was found guilty in March this year following a trial at Leeds Crown Court. Pusey was sentenced to 16 years in prison with 234 days already spent on remand to be taken off meaning he will serve a further 15 years and 131 days. Harriet was handed a sentence of 18 years less the time spent on remand making it a total of 17 years and 131 days. The Honourable Mrs Justice Farby told the two boys during the sentencing hearing this afternoon because of what you lot did to Kyrie he has lost many years of his life and his family has lost a son and brother. The judge lifted the reporting restriction on the teenagers and allowed the press to name them despite their juvenile ages. She said it was in the interests of preventing knife crime in the future. Wearing balaclavas and armed with knives, the pair lay in wait for Kyrie, who was only 15 years old, as he walked home from school in Huddersfield in West Yorkshire on September the 21st last year. The trial heard how the teenagers charged towards Kyrie aggressively as he left with his friends. The prosecutor, Jonathan Sandiford, said the 15-year-old Jaquel Pusey stabbed Kyrie in the chest with what proved to be a fatal blow as he went through his ribs and penetrated one of his lungs and his heart. CCTV was shown to the court of the teenagers charging at Kyrie jumping in the air while wielded a blade, but at this moment in time, West Yorkshire Police hasn't released the CCTV footage. Mr Sandiford said, both were aggressive and went for him and the 15-year-old described as jumping into the air and swinging a blade, stabbing Kyrie in the chest. That was a fatal blow that penetrated one of his lungs and heart. The prosecutor said the intended area for the stabbing was Kyrie's upper body, but his legs were in the way and instead he was stabbed in the leg. Kyrie then fell to the floor and was defenceless on his back when the 17-year-old defendant, Giovanni, who had previously denied murder, stabbed him in his lower leg. The 15-year-old stabbed him and slowed down and dropped one of his two phones. Having been stabbed, Kyrie McLean staggered or ran backwards from his attackers, but he was pursued by Giovanni, who was also armed with a large knife, and as he fell into the driveway. Giovanni had to leap over Kyrie McLean as he was so focused on him that he twisted in the air, keeping his focus on him. Having brought himself to a stop, he went over to where Kyrie was on the floor, completely defenceless, and stabbed him. Prosecutor said that although he did not inflict the fatal blow, he was guilty of murder because the pair acted together and were encouraging and supporting each other to carry out the attack. I just want to say rest in peace, Kyrie, and my condolences go out to your family. Kyrie was rushed to Leeds General Infirmary's major trauma unit but died as a result of his catastrophic injuries later that day. The prosecution had described it as a well-planned and targeted attack with the intention of killing him or at least causing him really serious harm. While in custody, the 15-year-old said he knew Kyrie was dead as soon as I did it. The 17-year-old was arrested in the early hours of the following morning of September the 22nd last year before the 15-year-old handed himself into the police station later that same day. The prosecutor said part of this evidence relates to a covert transcript recorded of the 15-year-old speaking at prison in Weatherby. During that conversation, he admitted the murder and gave some indication of the motive and also discussed how he might present himself as a remorseful person or a person who suffered trauma in order to get a shorter sentence. There was a discussion about whether or not he was going to admit his guilt in court. He initially said he was going not guilty until proven guilty and later said he had an alibi and as far as the phone dropped at the scene was concerned he would simply say that he had lost it. He admitted the murder saying at that stage they hadn't intended to get Kyrie McLean and instead another boy. He said that another person had set up the attack and he said he knows what he did. He said that person was talking to the 17 year old and admitted it was him who was seen on CCTV dropping the phone but said the feds don't have anything on me. He said what I was wearing, it had pink shades in it, you couldn't see my eyes so came out of the snicket and I said yo Kyrie and I did my ting in it. I knew he was dead as soon as I did it. So Kyrie's mother revealed her son had dreams of becoming an engineer before adding 
he had no chance against his relentless killers. She told the court, I am the mother of Kyrie McLean. He was a loving and caring person and he loved playing rugby league and was very good at it. He was a son, brother and friend and had a girlfriend so it was lovely to see how happy he was. He always said he wanted to be an engineer. However, she said on September the 21st, her life changed forever when the two cowards waited to attack Kyrie. She said he had no chance, he had no opportunity to defend himself and the fear he went through when he was attacked and bled to death will never leave me. She said she rushed to the scene after hearing Kyrie had been injured and said, I never got to say goodbye. I'm living a nightmare. When I wake up, when I manage to sleep, it hits me like a ton of bricks. If I could trade places with Kyrie, I would. We are left trying to pick up the pieces. I feel so sorry for the school children who had to witness the horrific incident, something they should never have to see. I ask myself, what has this achieved? What has my son died for? I have lost my child and other parents have lost their two children who did this. This violence has to stop and carrying weapons has to stop. I'd like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to the children and teachers who waited with Kyrie and the paramedics and doctors who tried in vain to save his life. Following his murder, his girlfriend also paid an emotional tribute saying he was the love of my life. We were talking about our future the other day. He was just the best person I knew. The last thing he said was, I can't wait to see you. He just told me how his day had been. He just said, it's been really good. And he sent me a picture of him walking home right by the bollards where he was killed. He would do anything for me. He would drop everything if I had something going on to be here. So the prosecutor said, aggravating features include the location near to the school and the attack being witnessed by school children who were streaming out as he was laid down on the pavement dying. The prosecutor said other aggravating features in the case include a degree of premeditation and planning, and he referred to the changing of clothing and face covering and the use of a spotter close to Kyrie, who was used to notify them when they got close to the location. In mitigation, the defence, Richard Wright, representing the 15-year-old, said he hasn't sought to explain away his conduct or seek sympathy from the court. He said, his letters to your ladyship are extremely open and often to his detriment, but what the Crown has sought to do is to take every open statement he has made and turn it against him. What is an offender to do? Either tell the truth or be punished or at least engage properly. And in mitigation for the 17-year-old is defence, Mohammed Nawaz said, in my submission, that report in every other respect is extremely positive. He describes him as being well-behaved, observing all rules in detention, reference to him being diagnosed with ADHD in 2014 and the resulting impact that he's had on his education but in detention has been described as a model student, mild-mannered and respectful, importantly showing genuine and real remorse in this event. So guys, once again, I just want to say rest in peace, Kyrie, and my condolences go out to your family. Superintendent Mark Bowles led the investigation said, if ever a case has highlighted the dreadful consequence of knife crime and the culture of carrying such weapons, the appalling attack on Kari outside a school was a crime that demonstrated the tragedy and rightly shocked people across the country. It will be hard for many of us to comprehend how what appears to have been a relatively low-level dispute has resulted in these males stabbing a fellow student to death at the end of an otherwise ordinary school day. The murder of Kairi was a planned, organised and targeted attack. The severity of the injuries they inflicted left Kairi with no chance of survival and left those closest to him without a much-loved son or friend and we can see to this day the impact his loss has had and continues to have on them. The lengthy sentences given to these males will not bring Kairi back to those who have lost him but will at least keep two very dangerous males off our streets for many years to come. And the Chief Superintendent Jim Griffiths, District Commander of Kirkley's Police said, the murder of Kyrie was a tragedy for his family and friends and a dreadful event for residents in Kirklees. Knife crime has rightly been a major topic of debate in Kirklees and the wider country and we really do understand why, particularly given cases as dreadful as this. I can promise residents that's when these awful offences occur that are not going to go undetected or unpunished. Our officers regularly make swift making arrests and put people before the courts, as was the case here. He said, I also want to reassure residents that there remains a huge amount of work ongoing in Kirklees by police and partners at all levels to reduce knife offending and that work is having an impact. I don't know, I'm going to disagree with that because every single week, as I've said in previous videos, Huddersfield seems to be the hotbed of violent crime. But obviously the police chief is here saying that seems to be reducing, but I don't buy that. He also went on to say, 
There remains a long way to go, but we are absolutely committed to seeing this work done and changing attitudes about carrying knives in the long term. So guys, this is a new story coming from Huddersfield Ways. Once again, rest in peace, Kyrie, and my condolences go out to your family. It's your boy GT. Keep it locked. Keep